Morning, uh, Brew Troopers. That yellow is in the sun again. Do apologise for that. Hopefully, you can uh, hear me over the uh, chickens in the background. Yeah, um, Sunday morning today. Uh, as I said in the week, not doing a brew today. Going to uh, sort the brew trolley out. Or I did call it a brew cart, but really it's a trolley. It's got four wheels. So the yeah, the brew trolley. But just a quick. Thanks for everyone that um, replied yesterday about the name change. Just going to keep saying Beanham Homebrew. You know, it's great that you guys are following me. Absolutely over the moon with that. That's uh, that's fantastic in all your comments. Great community. So yeah, thank you very much for that. Um, I don't know if I said it in my intro. The reason it's on a trolley is because the room I'm in, as you can see behind me, is where. Um, the whole heating's done for the house. I had to stick it out here. Basically, this is an old coal bunker built in 1869, I think it was done. The same as the, the cottage. Couldn't fit it in, obviously, the cottage without taking one of the rooms away. Uh, so we needed to, obviously, the extra room. So uh, it was installed out here. So it was quite in a bad way when we obviously done it. I plastered, then I put the old tiles up and put some wood up the top there and I vaulted the ceiling because before the ceiling was down where this dado rail is which is where the top of this is so I vaulted it just to make it feel a bit bigger um, then it was moved into I added some units which are on this side and what you guys are stood on um, to turn it into a laundry room because I do I've got a work machine here that I do my work washing because I get quite grubby so we keep that sort of washing separate to your everyday washing as you most probably notice I'm always in black because uh, I'm always getting quite grubby so black seems to hide a lot of sins but yeah so it turned into a laundry room and then um, my partner and me especially my partner likes ales and stouts and Guinness and all that sort of stuff and carriages used to do it years ago so I started brewing again so I sort of quickly knocked this trolley up and bought a couple of urns done a few malt extracts but obviously I want to do all grain that's that's I think the route I want to go I think that seems to be something you can experiment and play with a lot more you can with the malts late edition hopping and and bits and I've still got that obviously I IPA to uh, dry up which is for today so um, I'll tag that on hopefully at the end. I'm going to try and try and keep the video short because, like I said, it takes ages, bloody ages to upload. Didn't have any electric for two days. Bloody electric board, pain in the backside. But um, that uh, isn't too much of a problem for me because I've got a backup generator that sorts that out. So I ain't gonna poke it to be honest. But yeah, um, got that to do. But yeah, the uh, today's hopefully video is going to do some alterations to the brew trolley like I said to you before it's only got wood on the top and it's only stuck on um, I was going to stainless steel on the top of it can't find a bloody sheet of stainless I've looked everywhere can I find it no I can't I don't know what I've done with it so I might put curtain material I'll show you what that looks like but I've got it on the tops of the worktops because the worktops are wood as I say when I initially put this in here it was just a laundry room but the, the worktops haven't been sealed, haven't been treated, which it didn't say that on the packet, it said it had, but it hasn't because I've had got a bit of water on it and the wood's puckled a bit, so I'm gonna have to sand that down and then I'll put some on it. There's no point putting it on here because if you put stuff on there, then you've got it on that and it'll sterilize it again. So I'm, gonna, I'm thinking I'm gonna glue this curtain material down on it, but I am gonna put an up kick on the back of this so I can have my extractor on it because as the point I'm trying to get to I've got to be able to move this if I've got to do any repairs and uh, this heat, heat, heating system has to be flushed out every couple of years and uh, you need to get in there to flush it all out so this thing can't be permanently fixed here so it's on wheels so I can sort of push it around and sort of do it anyway so uh, I'm going to put like a little skirt, hood, whatever you want to call it on the back and then I can have my ducting hose up there and that portable ducting that you see, I can just plug it into the end of it and away we go. 
because I mean when it does get steamy in here it does get steamy and that wood up there would most probably not take too much of that before it starts to want to split and because the temperature in here stays more or less exactly the same year in and year out it stays about 22 degrees very rare that it go above 22 and especially in the winter when the heating is on full chat obviously everything's lagged it stays at 22 so it's a good room for drying stuff in and bits but yeah that's the plan I'm going to put some jackets on them most probably even though I want to try and do the Herms system uh, where you have the recirculating through the coil I might still do some jackets on them I've got some insulation left over from the uh, when I uh, rebuilt the cottage. So uh, yeah, so uh, basically I've got a couple of these Sherflow uh, pumps um, with the filters. Basically I'd ordered a few because I had a few jobs to do for, uh, for uh, a guy. Uh, one was in an, an old American RV. Uh, one was in one of those um, Airstream trailers. Uh, and then there was another guy he needed, I don't know, actually, didn't ask him what he actually does, but he had two big, big tanks in the back of his, I don't know if he was a window cleaner or what he was, but he wanted to be able to uh, put a bit more pressure, I think, on um, on the pumps. And some of them commercial ones can come in at quite a lot of money. I mean, these aren't these aren't too bad. I think I paid 40 quid. I paid about 40 quid off uh, that well-known bay. But yeah. Uh, so yeah, I've got these. Basically, I've just mocked them up. They're going to come off. I'm going to keep the filter on there. I'm going to mount them this way around. They just have a standard 12 volt fee fused with a switch. I'm going to mount them at the bottom of the trolley. I will show you the trolley in a minute. But connectors are going to come off. I've got to put a tap in there because they do pump at 30 psi. You can adjust that and regulate that, and you can. I'm hoping, trial and error, as you cock the uh, ball cock down, slow the pressure up, but I know it has like a um, shuttering system in there, so you don't actually bugger the pump, which can, I think, turn it off. Don't quote me on it. As I say, I won't know till I try it, but I think this is what all this switch is to do with. It actually is a bit like a meter in a stroke flow meter. So, say you running this dry or conking it out or whatever, I think it does slow it right down. As I say, you can adjust the pressure on the front of the screw according to that, which says on there anyway. Um, but yeah, so it's standard feed. Just going to have a couple of batches under there that I've got charging off a motorbike charger basically because they're only pulling four amps. Very much doubt they're going to pull the full, full four amps. As I say, it's, this says it does 10.6 litres per minute. Christ, I only want to move the water about and I don't want to wash stuff with it. So that's that can be quite some speed. Um, hopefully because they're going to be down there with a the length of hose on uh, and I'm using a bigger bore hose. I haven't got a bit here anyway. But yeah, uh, hopefully I can control that. So trial and error. So we're going to give these a whirl. So hopefully I can get these mounted as well today. Uh, wired up because I want to brew next Sunday. So... I want to try and sort of crack this out today, if possible, uh, but if not fully today, rest of the day. But yeah, this down there, two of them, cut the batteries, charging off the charger. As I said, the sort of extractor might even put a light in there because the window is really small in here. So all the light you can see is coming through the open door. It's not a massive building. Um, but yeah, so we've got two of those. Um, I'll twiddle it round. No, I won't. I have to stop it until it because I still don't know how to do that. Uh, and just show you the trolley. There's nothing spectacular, just something I'll quickly knock together. Some leftover bits I had. Shoved a bit of timber on it. It's actually made so it just fits in there. The top's wider than the bottom because it's obviously sort of hovering over stuff. So, yeah, let's have a quick look round. Right, here's a quick uh, turn round here. Sorry about that, like I said, the room's so bleeding small you can only just see it. There's the three urns, just fired on the top. You can see it sort of shoehorned in between all of this and that. That's the trolley, or what you can see of the trolley. Um, and obviously it's just a shelf at the bottom. As I said, it was only quickly walked together. 
So I'm going to cover the wood as I said over it with the some. It's not curtain material as you guys might think. It's what's used on commercial trucks on the side of the um, trucks for, for the curtains, basically. So uh, it's what I've used on the top. Let me see if I can just twiddle around. Whoa! So it's this stuff here, basically. It's got a shiny side and a sort of a ribbed side, but it's good for wiping down and cleaning down. I've tried it with the heat. I actually use it, make them up and use them for welding curtains. So, uh, yeah, that's what basically... Just go a bit slow that time. Christ, that made, that made me feel sick of that. So, yeah, that's the sort of trolley. You can just see in the distance there the two water filters I've got. Got to, uh, I mounted them on the side now. I don't know whether I want them on there, but I think I'll keep them there because that's the size of the O's and it's going to go up onto the left hand one is going to be the um, I don't know, is it the Hearns? It's going to have the coil in it. I think I'm going to make a false top for it. Then this one will be where the water is so I can turn it. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, just started to rain, so let's get the washing in. Do want to get that all wet. So yeah, that's the uh, bottom of the uh, trolley. I might put a piece of alley, uh, alley on the bottom of that because the pumps are going to be on there. When I put the wood, I've left it a little bit short. So I'm going to put like a little drip tray on there to um, catch any spills because it's going to be spills, isn't there? It's going to be water and stuff everywhere. It's normally what happens. So yeah, there, that's the uh, trolley, obviously. With the urns on it's only a bit of cheap board that i put on the top i had a bit left over just cut it up and glued it on because i did always plan to put stainless on there like i say i can't find that sheet so i was going to put ali on there ali's not the best would be all right if i was to paint it all but to be honest it can still rub the paint off after a little while and so i thought i'll just fire this material on glue it down if i do come across it i can just stick it over the top we can just put it over the top and it'll actually um, stay there. So, yeah, that's my plan. Obviously, like I said, up kick. I can only go up a certain height because I still, like I say, got to try and get out the door if I can um, for when I want to work on there. So that's why it's on wheels. So, yeah, as I said, that'll be the, um, the coil in there. This is going to be the mash ton and this will be the boiler. Now, uh, See what I'm twiddling you back again. Right, yeah, I said before I had problems with both those boilers and not that one. Uh, the last time I was doing that oatmeal stout, I said to you it didn't look like it was boiling. Now, I'd had false bottoms in them. These kiddies here, false bottoms. Um, I think that's what was causing the problem. Letting a lot of the heavier sediment get to the bottom causing the plate to think it's dry because obviously I don't know it must sense I don't know it's resistance what it does but it's obviously got an anti run dry switch on it which doing a bit of research sort of times out so I've got a feeling that's what was causing the problem so I've now taken them out obviously as you can see in my hand here because obviously the spout on these are we well, can see how much lower this sat on the bottom and that went straight in because I've got I mean, the stain is still a bit of tube up. Obviously that went in, went to the tap. So when you went to get the last out, you always have to take this out anyway, tip it out. So I've done away with that now, taking them out. And I'm going to stick these hop strainers, I think they call them. Screw that in, especially in the mash tun. I'll screw that in because the other thing was as well, you couldn't get right to the bottom to stir it. So uh, I'll use that and in the boiler also I'll use that because I've got a false bottom in the boiler and it's funny out it's both of them that have done that uh, especially this one when I did eventually wash it out I don't know whether it's tainted the oatmeal we did try a little bit when we put it in a keg uh, yeah the kegs arrived the other day and a gas bottle I'll give you a quick look at that as well so changing to these so then at least I can get right to the bottom and I think because I'm going to add the pumps, I'll keep it circulating in there. I'll, um, hopefully, when you're obviously maybe back feeding it when you've got on the boil, what I might actually do is circulate it in there while I'm boiling it 
that might keep it all I know it's going to be mixing around and moving around when it's boiling but hopefully if I add that in as well it might prevent that I don't know it might be something I'll play with not sure as I say it's all it's all playing with like the pumps really uh, you know a lot of people use stainless steel pumps and stuff like that but I would think the cogs inside are still either they might be stainless and they might have phosphor bronze bushes and stuff in them obviously with the heat on stainless and stuff like that you can, it can get a bit tight but they're obviously machined with clearance and stuff so these I've just tried these because I've used them and they're used for fresh water in RVs and caravans and all that sort of alike so they uh, it says it takes the temperature because you use them on the hot water system as well some people that have these deluxe ones have pumped water systems and some some people I've even seen them use for, for showers on RVs so and caravans and motor homes and bits so yeah I'm going to use these in there um, to see whether that cures the problem with it keep tripping um, hopefully it will so uh, yeah I'll just quickly show you the uh, kegs and then we'll get on and start covering the trolley um, so yeah let me give you a quick twirl right there we go that's the uh, the two kegs that's that Geordie mild that I put in and the one over the back there is that oatmeal stout um, the bottle came a week late because uh, pe the people that sent it uh, it wasn't their fault it was a carrier bashed the bottle and lost all the gas and stuff so um, these gas co this gas company uh, I've been using these now for maybe two years as I say I was with BOC there there I think the rumours I've heard are they're actually stopping BOC they've been bought out by a German company and a lot of the supplier so this gas supplier luckily enough for me is, is not far away from me when I'm out and about for work I can uh, pick it up but they sent me this one the second one they sent on a pallet the first one as I say got damaged but yeah the company's called um Obby Weld if anyone's interested in, in the UK I don't know if they're anywhere else this is food grade carbon dioxide let me see see that Look, yeah food grade carbon dioxide uh, obviously you get the regulators from all over the place on the internet loads of different places this one's got this stupid little connector in here I found though there's an allen key there so I should be able to undo that because it comes with a humongous tail on it which doesn't fit the pipe work for the rest of the keggy so I've managed to sort of couple something together and I've got gas in both of them but what I need to do is get gas in them uh, and cold crush them a lot of people do but you need a fridge for that but I've seen um, Craig tube he's um, Craig on YouTube he's said if you put gas in it I think it was about five or six get it on your lap and sort of roll it backwards and forwards it helps the gas go in to the to carbonate the uh, the beer but yeah well um, we need to practice with that but as I say if anyone's interested I think you pay for the bottle the whole bottle there as it stands I think it was 90 quid but 50, 60 quid of that is you buy the bottle, but it's refundable. If you ever get fed up with it and you don't want to do it anymore, you give the bottle back, you get your 60 quid, 50 or 60 quid deposit. Whatever the deposit is, you get it back anyway. And it doesn't, the other gas company that I used before these, which their gas has just got so pricey off changed to these, year on year, you lose what you've paid for the gas bottle rental so if you paid 60 quid the following year they'd only give you 50 quid and then after that 40 quid and then it gets to a minimum and then it's done out of you have the bottle 10 years you get like the minimum but with this company you don't you get back what you've put in so basically you're sort of buying a bottle but renting it if you like but you pay a one off now that's a darn sight cheaper i have 13 different other bottles of gas my boc gas prices were nearly two and a half three grand a year for rental so when you actually add these up to not the co2 the other ones some of the other ones i've got bigger bottles it's a lot cheaper and i think only this only works out to have it refilled it's about 32 quid i think they told me i can confirm that uh, don't quote me on that but yeah these guys they're all over the place if you look on the internet 
you can find out near your local uh, supplier of it. As I say, not everyone does the food grade carbon dioxide, but these guys, they will post it to you. So if you want one, you can get onto them and as I say, you have to pay the one off charge and stuff. And then when you get near, they tell you their local supplier and then they are always stock one. So when you're getting low or you run out, you don't think, oh Christ, I've got to wait a week. You can just go to your local supplier, swap the bottle over, obviously pay whatever the refill charge is for swapping it over, and away you go again. So, yeah, I chose to go this way because, one, I use the gas company all the time, and I didn't want to use the S30. Now, in hindsight, the issues I've had trying to get the pipe work to do the couplers and stuff, because it is John Guest stuff you can use, but it's their food and, sorry, it's their drink and water dispensing side, not the standard plumbing size that you can walk down the old plumbing hardware shop and get the connectors. Done a lot of digging about that as well. They actually have a sister company that aren't called John Guest, but do all the food dispensing. They reckon there is a few plumbing versions that do do them. Um, I have seen a lot of people using the standard 10 mil push connects. So uh, I'll hopefully keep you up posted on that when I've actually sorted out and I've done it myself. So less of this waffling and just stood here looking at three bottles. Let's get on and mess around with this trolley. Right now, uh, YouTube, there we go. I've uh, bent the uh, alley and fitted it on. Hopefully you can see that. Um, I've not fixed the alley or anything down. I know I wasn't going to do alley and I said I was going to do stainless. Couldn't find the sheet. As I say, I've not stuck it down. Um, I've just folded the edges just to get them to go over the wood a bit tight. And there. And obviously, where are we? Here we are. Up here as well. Uh, it, as I say, I've not, I've not glued it down. I'm not going to glue it down. Um, I'm just going to, I don't know why that's so tight, but yeah, it's, uh, that's that bit on there. I think I've just left it like that, so if I ever need to change it or anything goes on. The only reason I went ahead and done the alley in the end was the pots were obviously marking the wood, because it's not hardwood or anything, it's just that spruce ply type stuff, so I thought I'd just put that on. Uh, it does give off grubbiness on your fingers, don't know if you can see it, so I will just put the material over the top. Uh, the next job, so I'm going to do the up kick, like I described, to go there. Uh, can't bother to get a full sheet out, cut it in half and then fold it. So I'm actually going to make the corners, uh, maybe some like triangles going from there and going up, uh, just to support the back and then the back bit of slipping. I might even clad it in a bit of plastic, I don't know. We'll uh, we'll, we'll see, you know, because um, obviously there's going to be condensation. Uh, again, the only reason I'm doing it is so I can move the cart in and out. I, I've pulled that out to do that, and I've just pushed it back in to see. Uh, the pumps oh, are going to go on there, but I'm not 100% sure whether I'm going to make them on a, put them on a little pedestal. I've uh, got some elbows to go on there and some taps. I was going to sit one there, let me get the other one, and one there. Put some elbows on it, some taps. Uh, I was thinking of putting them higher, but I think with the extra pipe to reduce the flow should help. So I'll, um, I'll get on, it's coming up to near lunchtime I think now. Oh no, is it? I don't know, I don't know what the bloody time is now. Um, so yeah, done that bit. As I say, sorry about the dodgy camera work and you can't see too much. Maybe when we put the camera up, I'm thinking of putting the camera up there so we can shine out uh, onto me over there. Try and get you further away so you can see more. But yeah, so the pump's hopefully gonna go there. Just behind that, I'm gonna have two batteries, run the cable up, so um, we're gonna i'm just trying to use material that i've got hanging around so i don't really want to cut into a new sheet so these side bits up here the outside of them i'm going to have checker on them but yeah 
hopefully. Uh, so um, yeah, onwards and upwards. And I might try and upload some of this at lunch time, see if it can get loaded. As I say, I want to try and get most of it done, if not all of it done today. Uh, I will run out of connectors, but it will only be a matter of connectors. Uh, and like I said, I put a couple of drip trays, I think, maybe there. So I might bring those motors forward. But if I'm going to put them on a pedestal, I won't have to, because I'll need to put a couple of little catch trays or something under there. As I say, if I can keep it all within this frame, um, you might have realised the frame's different shapes, different sizes, well, it's because it's had to shoe on or bend down. And it's been made so it can fit in here. Like I said, I've got all my valves and pipe work and everything that I have to check and service and stuff. So it's actually made an odd shape. I didn't mess up on the uh, measurements, honest. So, uh, yeah, let's, um, let's crack on and hopefully do a little bit more of an update after lunch. Right, YouTube. Cheers. Right, just a uh, quick one. That's uh, coming near the end of the day. Um, the most probably see a bit of the corner of the brew, brew trolley. Hopefully you can hear me over the uh, hot water pump running. Um, partner's been out and she's calling it a ke kebab trolley now and burger. She thought I was doing beers, which I was, so I think she's taking the, old, uh, taking the mickey a little bit. So um, I'll give a quick puzzle in a minute. But yeah, I've, um, I did do early on the top in the end. I will put the material on there. I haven't cut that yet. I've done a bit of sealing. Just want to let that go off. Uh, put the batteries at the bottom, mounted the two pumps, just got to wire them in, wire the extractor, maybe put a light or something up there, it's quite bright in here as it is with the door open, obviously when the winter comes, I have got lights, you can see one behind me, they're not fantastically bright, they're... but I don't know, if I need to put lights, I can put lights on it or something, so um, yeah, I'll just uh, do a quick twiddle and then um, go from there right apologies again for the uh, terrible camera work but it is quite small in here but this is basically what I've done just letting the stuff dry um, I didn't want to sacrifice another piece of uh, aluminium and this is why I've done this piece here just put a fold on it obviously and there so I've made the corners as a filler panel basically, just cut them, folded them, and then I've just used some uh, some mastic there, just a bit across the bottom there. As I say, this top will be covered. I'm not going to stick it on, I think I'll just lay it on there because the pots will be on there. That's basically the, the top. I've just done a, a return like that, just basically so I can use this top section here to put the... Uh, ducting over, I'm going to probably run down the back and if I pop down under here, it'll run down and hopefully along here and I'll just couple to it but that's the shelf chuck the two batteries in there just got them charging at the minute they're just two six volts wired together, it's going to be 12 made this bracket, there's a little bit of a wobble on it so this is why I've used this black stuff there and I've put some up under there and again there and there because these it was moving left to right I don't think it'll do that because I'm not using rigid pipes when you install them in a, a motorhome or something uh, if they're on rigid pipes you can get a bit of thrust they've got rubber mountings on them I've left the rubber mountings on them um, and I've just coupled them there. I will be changing those plastic ends. I'll put some elbows on there and there with the male couplers. Uh, another one there and there and I will put taps on them. As I say, I just need to wire them up. Thinking of putting the switches up here. I'll put one over there, one over here, which will um, I can just switch on and off and then hopefully adjust the pressure with the handle, if not, I'll get a, I don't know, voltage regulator or something to uh, 
adjust the voltage but I think you can do it with the pressure uh, pardon me but we'll see but yeah that's it I've just basically put a piece of alley on there as well just to tidy it up let's say I've got the two batteries on there sorry it's so close I do apologize um, then I've just mounted the two motors like I just said there I don't know whether I'll do a shelf in between this gap so I can sort of lay all the hoses and stuff in there maybe don't know we'll see but yeah I'm pleased with what I've got done so far as I say that's looking up from well, I'm actually now on the floor um, yeah it's uh, I've left the water as it was there um, and yeah put the pots in so the next job will be to chuck the plastic on there shove the urns on um, and have a play let me just twist it about right right so yeah that's uh, basically where I've got to today let me just have another drink it's been bloody hot today but at least I've got a lot done thanks unfortunately that's not one of my brews yet I've still got them sat there um, I'm gonna have to sort out about a fridge and a fermenting fridge will be the next task in hand but I wanted to get that done because I want to do an all grain brew next Sunday um, hope everyone's had a good brew today on the Sunday hope that everyone's been doing lots of brewing um, as I say it was something I needed to do it was a bit here there and everywhere and I was doing everything with a jug and messing around so I'm sort of on my way now in the right direction I think from how I want it to be um, Maybe it's a bit elaborate having it on a trolley, but like I said, you, I need to take the trolley out there sometimes. And I couldn't think of a nicer way or an easier way of having the ducting. I was just, it was just there before on a bit of, which I suppose was all right, but I could have been Heath Robinson. So I thought, well, if I put a um, sort of quarter canopy on it, and you most probably notice these I've cut at an angle. So they're shallow at the top and wider at the bottom. I, I didn't want it fully all the way over because uh, obviously if there is a lot of steam going on that's going to get a lot of condensation in there and it's only going to drip down there. It literally was just uh, a way of just a bit of support for when I want to put the duct in on there for extraction. Um, just going to use tubular. Um, I might use flat channel down the back because I've got a flat channel to a tube converter. I'm not, I don't know whether I'm going to do it for all three yet. I'll put all the pots on there and see. It all depends really how well, um, how well the suction is. I do have a bigger extractor that I could couple, but that runs off a 150. I can couple that down to the 100, but we'll see how that works. So uh, I was going to try and get it all done today, but I obviously haven't. So I'll most probably list this one as part one and try and get the rest of it done well, I want to get the rest of it done in the week because I want to do um, I start doing all grain um, uh, yeah that's that's what I want to do so I suppose enough waffling there um, I spat it yeah any comments I always like comments good or bad don't really bother me um, but yeah as I say I hope everyone's had a good Sunday or good Sunday, Monday, whichever, which time zone you're in, it might be Saturday, I don't know, but yeah, I, I hope you've had good brews or anything to do with brewing or anything else, so yeah, again, cheers guys, thanks very much for watching, and um, I'll keep the updates coming, bye for now.